Raypack, part of the Ream family of companies. As a reminder to all of our participants, the instruction provided in this training is intended for qualified and experienced professionals. If you are not qualified, please do not attempt to apply these instructions on your own. Raypack is happy to announce that we now have the capacity to cascade up to eight boilers together in the same system controlled by a single master boiler or building management system. This training module will show you how it's done. In this training, we will define cascade expansion, share which products it supplies to, discuss the new features, and show you how to set the whole thing up. Repack cares about the environment and strives to make efficient products that support the comfort of our customers while keeping an eye on sustainability. When you see this logo in a Raypack presentation, it indicates the subject of sustainability and support supports Raypack's goals towards a healthier planet. Cascading means connecting and operating two or more Raypack appliances together. Raypack Versa controlled systems have had four boiler cascade capability for years. Now we have eight boiler cascade capability with lots of new features too. The Xverse boilers are just one example where this is applied. All Versa controlled products will have this new 8 boiler cascade capability, including the Xverse L, the new Xfire, the Xverse, and the Xpac FT. Also included is the entire range of MVB and Xtherm appliances. The high deltas that operate with Versa are also included. Another cool feature of cascading Raypack boilers is that you can mix different Raypack Versa controlled boilers in the same system. This is especially handy in cold climates. Next up, we will present the features included with this new technology. Expanding from four boiler cascade capability to eight boiler cascade capability was accomplished with a software revision to the Versa system. When this revision was made, we included other cool features too. As stated, we can now cascade up to eight boilers on the same system. We can now offer parallel or sequential modulation on all Versa-controlled H-type boilers. We also included an adjustable interstage delay and improved error messages. The cascade alarm has adjustable settings. Heater rotation now applies across all boilers up to eight in the system. Minimum flow offset and isolation valve controls that are unique to primary systems are also included. Hydronic type boilers ordered after August 1st, 2020 will all have the new software revision and will be capable of parallel or sequential modulation when in cascade with other Raypack boilers. We will show what that means on the next few slides. With the older software, the boilers were limited to sequential modulation, meaning each boiler had to reach 100% firing rate before the next boiler in the cascade would come on. With parallel modulation, the whole group of connected boilers will fire up to low fire, then ramp up together to meet the demand. This is a four boiler example, but is by no means the limit. We can now cascade and parallel modulate up to eight hydronic boilers together. This is a six boiler example in parallel modulation. Running all boilers together this way can save on fuel cost. The efficiency of the boilers is best at low fire. This is why turndown ratios are promoted so much in advertising. Cascade Interstage Delay is another feature added with this software upgrade. Interstage Delay is a programmable time period to hold off firing up the next boiler. This delay can be a workaround for a bad system sensor placement. The new software also has improved error messages. The new messages offer suggestions for what to check in the event of a problem. A few examples are shown here. Another improvement with this new software release is the cascade alarm control. With cascade alarm off on the master, only the boiler with a fault will sound the alarm. With cascade alarm on at the master, all boilers in the cascade will sound when any boiler has a fault. In either case, the master will redistribute the load, compensating for the boiler that is off. The same automatic rotation rules apply to the new eight boiler cascade. After 48 hours of burner runtime and the current call for heat satisfied, the next boiler in the cascade with the least amount of burner runtime will fire. 
If a boiler has 60 hours of continuous run time, it will push to target plus differential, then turn off and let the next boiler in the cascade run. In primary plumbing systems, when the next boiler in the system comes online, there is an expected pressure drop. Ideally, if the system is plumbed well with the RAPAC recommended reverse return logic, the pressure drop will be proportional to the number of boilers online. Sometimes though, this is not the case. Differences in the routing of plumbing from one boiler to the next can add or subtract pressure drop leading to an unbalanced hydraulic load. The cascade minimum flow offset feature can help in balancing that load. Isolation valves are used in primary systems to keep the water from flowing through unfired boilers, but sometimes there is a minimum requirement of accessible flow to meet the needs of the system pump. In this case, the minimum number of isolation valves to be open can be set. As stated, this is only a feature to be used with primary plumbed systems. Now that we have discussed all of the features, let me show you how easy it is to set this up. With the previous software, the number of boilers we could cascade and control together was limited to four units. With the new software, we can now cascade and control on the same system up to eight units. The old system used star topology with each follower independently wired to the master boiler. The new system uses daisy chain wiring. In the highly unusual case that more units are needed beyond the eight, then a temp tracker mod plus hybrid can be used. In that last slide, we used a few new terms like star topology. Star topology means each follower is wired to the master like the arms of a star that all go back to the center. Here is an example of that. Each follower connects to the master at the FT bus. Another new term. A bus is simply a term used to describe a communication system. The old software used FT bus exclusively to accommodate each follower boiler communicating to the master boiler. The follower PIMS connected to the master versa. With the new software, four additional follower PIMS can be connected to the master PIM. These four additional followers will be called follower 5, 6, 7, and 8. They will wire up PIM to PIM in daisy chain fashion. This connection is called a TN bus. The complete 8 boiler cascade looks like this, with 3 followers connected on the FT bus indicated with the green lines, and 4 more on the TN bus indicated with the red lines. All 7 followers are controlled by the master. With FT bus connections, each follower PIM connects from its J3 location to the master versa. With the TN bus connections, they are all daisy chained to the J2 location on the PIM. With both FT bus and TN bus connections possible, you have options as to how to connect the boilers in a cascade. With two boilers, you can connect the follower to either the FT bus or the TN bus. With three boilers, you can put both followers on the FT bus or one each on the FT and TN bus, or both on TN bus. With four boilers in play, the options expand to all three followers on the FT bus or two on the FT bus and one on the TN bus, or two on the TN bus and one on the FT bus, or all three followers daisy chained to the TN bus. Just remember, the FT bus connections are limited to three followers, and the TN bus connections are limited to four followers. Consider the pros and cons of visibility and ease of wiring when designing the system. Operation of FT bus followers will be visible on the master, while the operation of TN followers will not. The TN followers are easier to connect up with daisy chain wiring. There are three locations where you can see the connections for the TN bus followers. You will see them on the 3D system view screen. You will see them on the system view screen. And you will also see them on the cascade screen included with the new software. On the cascade setting screen, it shows all the followers where followers 2 through 4 are FT bus and followers 5 through 8 are TN bus. Please note that the boiler data for the TN followers will not be seen on the master boiler, but it will be shown on each individual TN bus follower boiler. If the TN bus followers are connected to a building management system, 
then the data will be seen there as well. That same visibility is true if the TN followers are equipped with remote. In this example, you have an eight boiler cascade to wire up. There is one master boiler as there can be only one. Three followers on the traditional FT bus and four more followers on the new TN bus. How do you set it up? First, you connect up the FT bus followers as normal from the follower PIMS to the master versa. Next, you can daisy chain connect the TN bus followers from each follower PIM ultimately to the master PIM by way of the daisy chain connection. Then specify the TN bus address for each of the follower units. This will be on the boiler menu. Change the cascade ID from off to either 5, 6, 7, or 8. Confirm you can see all followers on the master by way of the green lights on the cascade setting screen. If they don't show, check the wiring. If running a building management system, connect the master and the four TN bus followers to the putter node. There will be more on this later. Now it's done. We also worked out all of the old versus new versus compatibility questions. After deploying the new software into production, we will still have cascades in the field that might not want to utilize the new features. If VersaBoard replacement is necessary, what happens? We evaluated that for two conditions, replacement on a follower or replacement on a master in an existing cascade. In this case, say you lose a follower VersaBoard for some reason and replace it with a new VersaBoard with the new software. What happens? Everything works. The FT bus follower is not affected because the master is speaking the same as it was before and the follower fully understands its commands. Obviously, no new functionalities are available anywhere in the cascade. So what if the master versa goes down? Does the cascade still work with a new software version on the versa board in the master and with old software remaining on the followers? Yes, everything still works but it is important to keep the cascade settings the same as they were on the old Versa board. The master boiler will still communicate with the followers. The new features will be visible on the master, but not functional because the followers do not have the new software. The new software launched August 1st, 2020. It is version P. Equipment ordered prior to August 1st will not have the new features, while all Versa control boilers ordered after that date will. So, say you have an existing cascade of Raypack boilers and you want to update them to the latest software and features. How do you do that? It depends slightly on what you are running. If you are running LCD equipped boilers like our High Delta or XPEC FT, then all that is required is the new VersaBoard. The kit, number 080244, will include an installation manual too. If your boilers have 7 inch touchscreens, like the MVB, Xtherms, or full-size Xverse models, then your kit will include the Versa board, SD card, and installation manual. That kit number is 080241F. If your cascade is made of the new Xfire products without the optional remote feature, then use kit 080242F for the Versa board, SD card, and manual. If you are running a new cascade of Xverse L or Xfire with Raymote, then the kit number is 080243F. Please note, Raypack is not responsible for covering the cost of upgrading equipment ordered prior to the release date. The new cascade software is fully building management system compatible. Remember, the TN bus connected boilers have no visibility on the master but when connected through a building management system, as likely would be the case in big installations requiring more than four boilers, you can see them on the building management software through the Modbus connection lines. Be careful not to cross up the connections, ground to ground, positive to positive, and negative to negative. You will need to set the Modbus address for each of the TN followers on the adjustment screen under Modbus port settings. In this case, TN bus follower 5 is Modbus address 2. TN bus follower 6 is Modbus address 3. TN bus follower 7 is Modbus address 4. TN bus follower 8 
is Modbus address 5. The Modbus address is what differentiates the IDs on the TN bus connected boilers. That same proto node can potentially be used for communicating to a lot of other equipment, like air handlers or chillers. Therefore, the address window has address numbers available from 1 to 247, in case some of the load numbers are already taken. This is an example of an 8 boiler cascade connected to a building management system by way of a proto node for the master and FT bus followers and by way of Modbus connections for the TN bus followers. The building management system will see the master and followers 2, 3, and 4 by way of the master boiler's FT bus connections. Follower boilers 5, 6, 7, and 8 on the TN bus will be visible to the building management system and identified by the building management system by their Modbus address. In this case, Modbus addresses 2, 3, 4, and 5. The data will appear as boiler 1 for all TN bus followers because each one of the TN bus followers are independently connected to the BMS. Each one sees itself as Boiler 1. The Modbus address, in conjunction with the Boiler 1 name, is the identifying marker for the TN bus connected follower boilers. The Modbus address functions as the boiler identifier. The troubleshooting section is next, and it is brief, as it should be. When setting up a building management system, occasionally the BMS will not see the TN bus followers. This can be related to the Modbus RS485 bias switch in the proto node. Just remove the cover on the proto node and turn the Modbus RS485 bias switch on. Like most computer applications, you might have to re reboot the system after making this change. In the event there's a problem with the boiler in the cascade, the master boiler will compensate. For instance, if four boilers are running at 25% each and one goes down, the other three will ramp up to 33% each. When the problem is corrected and the fourth boiler comes online again, the four will run at 25% each again. This example is assuming constant demand, of course. An error code that might happen is E47. The boxes in the lower part of this slide is what will be shown on the touchscreen. The LCD is analogous. Error 47 indicates a problem with the cascade wiring. Error 46 is an ID error. That means two or more of the TN bus connected boilers are sharing the same Modbus address, or possibly one of the followers has versed dip switch number two in the on position, indicating it thinks it's a master. An error code in the range of E62 to E65 will be displayed on the master when TN bus followers 5, 6, 7, or 8 is lost. And error code E48 will show on the associated follower for the same problem. Never wire a boiler on both FT bus and TN bus to the master boiler. Use one bus or the other for each follower boiler, but not both on the same boiler. This new software update and new features launched on August 1st, 2020. We have resources available for you too. Soft launch for the 8 boiler cascade feature is August 1st, 2020. All orders for Versi equipped appliances placed on or after that date will have the new software. Full launch, including release of upgrade kits, is slated for the fall of 2020. The Versi Versa manual supplied with Versi equipped appliances will be updated to reflect this new capacity. This training video will also be available on the website. I hope you have enjoyed this presentation on this exciting new feature of Raypack Boilers. Raypack, engineered to perform, built to last.